Learn about lead poisoning and how to prevent it in the workplace and at home during this video series presented by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. Lead has many important uses and economic benefits because it is a very durable mineral and generally less expensive than other metals. However, lead is highly toxic. In the past, lead was used extensively in paints, but concerns over its toxicity caused the ban of lead paint for residential and public buildings in the late 1970s. Lead was also used as an anti-knock additive and octane booster in gasoline, but environmental exposure concerns resulted in the gradual phase-out of leaded gasoline in the United States by 1978. Lead can still be found in many household and commercial products today. However, the primary industrial use for lead in the United States is lead acid storage batteries. Other industries that use lead include mining and construction. You may have heard about or know someone affected by lead poisoning, a serious medical condition where lead enters the body through inhalation or ingestion, usually in the form of dust or fumes. It then enters the bloodstream where it can harm many of the body's organs, most significantly the neurological system. Lead poisoning is commonly diagnosed with a blood test. This includes venous and capillary tests. Lead poisoning can also cause mental and physical impairment, and young children are the most vulnerable. Symptoms of lead poisoning can vary, and they are difficult to notice because the toxic substance builds up slowly over time. Many parents would believe that they would know if their child had an exposure or not. Unfortunately, that's not true. Most children are going to be what we say asymptomatic, which means they do not have any symptoms. So it's very important that you go to your physician for your well-child checks and get a lead level. Most physicians ought to do it at one and two years of age. Lead poisoning can be treated, but any damage cannot be reversed, and treatment depends on how much lead is in the blood. The most important treatment and prevention method is to remove the source of lead. If a child or adult has elevated lead levels in their blood, they will be referred to a caseworker to help manage the process of removing the source of exposure and bringing down their blood lead levels. The Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, as well as other local jurisdictions within the state, have a team of lead risk assessors who primarily work as detectives using specialized tools, techniques, and training to discover where sources of lead contamination can be found. One of the primary tools is an XRF gun, which is an X-ray fluorescence scanner, and it uses radiation, and basically if there's lead in whatever uh, we're shining this upon, it excites the lead and makes it glow, and this tool can get a reading from that. So we use this to test a lot of painted surfaces, walls, baseboards, trims, etc., as well as toys. Um, this is a, the first thing I go to whenever I go to do an assessment, is I'll do a lot of XRF shots, uh, try to gather information. Other common sources of lead include deteriorating house paint made before 1978, toys made and painted outside of the United States, water polluted by lead pipes or solder, soil polluted by car exhaust, chipping paint or mine waste, bullets and other forms of ammunition, fishing sinkers, paint sets, art supplies, jewelry and pottery, stained glass windows, and some traditional ethnic medicines, spices, and candy made outside of the U.S. Anyone with concerns about lead poisoning should contact a physician as soon as possible and reach out to their local or state health department for guidance and information. For more information on this topic, you can follow the links below in the description of this video or visit health.mo.gov and search for lead.